Alright guys, welcome back to Comic Gen. Today we're going to be trying something a little bit different. Uh, I've always wanted to try my hand at ASMR style videos. For those of you who aren't familiar with ASMR, it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. And according to Wikipedia, it's an experience characterized by a static-like or tingling sensation on the skin that typically begins on the scalp and moves down the back of the neck and upper spine. <clears throat> so with that being said, let's get into this. I've, I've seen a couple of ASMR videos and I like them. Uh, one of the big ones is Amy McLean, which I promoted on the show last week. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at the final issue of Wizard Magazine. Of course, this is from March of 2011. Back when Ryan Reynolds was signed on to play Hal Jordan in the Green Lantern movie. This is Wizard number 235. Exclusive Doctor Who meets Star Trek. Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds as DC Comics' top space cop. Captain America's shield, evil heartbreakers, dating tips for fanboys. Wizardworld.com. Uh, you got Green Lantern, David Finch, Incredible Change Bots 2, and the All-Star Superman DVD. Now, as you can tell, my issue is in pretty rough shape. I've had it quite a while. I used to collect Wizard magazines back in the day when they were real big. Um, I'd like to start collecting them again. Um, some of them are pretty expensive. Others are fairly cheap, so we'll see. Uh, but like I said, I used to collect them. And several times that I moved... Uh, they kind of got left behind. So, let's take a look inside. You got here an ad for Dragon Quest VI Realms of Revelation. New worlds, new heroes. Put that to the side here. That's for Nintendo DS. You got here the table of contents. Magic words, fun bags of mail, movies, uh, Green Lantern movie, Favreau scraps Iron Man, real life superheroes, fanboy hitmaker, comics, David Finch's Bat Faves, Last Man Standing, Star Trek vs. Doctor Who, The Pole List, Trade Show, Change Bots 2, 21st Century Fan Man, Art Attack, Con Spotlight. You got the TV section, video games, lifestyle, market watch, price guide liftings, listings, and cliffhanger. For those of you who don't know, John and I, when we created Comic Gen, we based it on wizard magazine we wanted to bring what we loved from the old wizard magazines to youtube all things geek culture you know comics movies tv toys the works and i think we've been doing that fairly well uh it's taken us quite some time to build an audience though so I'm kind of hoping maybe if we do a couple of these ASMR videos, we can appeal to a broader audience. So, got the magic words, rifling through our fun bags of mail. Um, ju it's just letters to the editor, I guess. Bunny letter. Our resident, drunken, 
hammer swinging rabbit steals our mail and answers it. A lot of younger fans out there need to know that comic book based movies had bad previous incarnations on the big screen and small screen. Robert Johnson via email. Wow, Robert, thank you. If only there was some evidence of these horrible productions out there, then we wouldn't need your email or your due diligence to clue the youth of today into the fact that comic book movies have been made poorly in the past. If only there was a, say, video example or something on DVD, perhaps the internet could hold some facts as to the su suckitude of comic movies and TV shows in the past. But alas, we're stuck with you and your letter. Way to go, Robert. Way to go. <laughs> so here we have the movie spotlight for Green Lantern, which turned out being a lackluster film. Ryan Reynolds was not born to play Hal Jordan like he was for Deadpool. Um, I don't think, I don't think Ryan Reynolds should have been cast. Um, I think it should have gone to a more serious actor, whereas Ryan Reynolds is more sarcastic. He's perfect for Deadpool. He's perfect for some of the other roles he's played. But when it comes to Green Lantern, he's just, he, he was not meant to play Hal Jordan. The other characters did fairly well, the rest of the cast. So, but the story was also pretty bad. Bringing in one of the main bad guys right off the bat being Parallax. Not really the best move. Uh, to make this look real, we've got to believe in Hal Jordan, Guy Major. Um, that's another thing that they really, really failed to do. Um, I certainly didn't really believe in Hal Jordan in this movie. Don't get me wrong, I like Ryan Reynolds. I, I like his uh, characters. Um... I just don't think he was the right choice to play Hal Jordan. I know they needed a big name to play Hal Jordan, um, but it shouldn't have been Ryan Reynolds. And it's not all his fault either. It is a lot of the storytelling as well. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and move on. It's not easy being green. Got the Wizard Wor or the Toronto Comic Con Wizard World. Um, that was 2011. Julie Benz was there from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Dexter, and No Ordinary Family. Also had Carlos Pacheco, Billy D. Williams, John Schreider, and Phil Jemens. Stark Reality. Uh, why director John Favreau left Marvel's Iron Man? And what's next for the billion dollar franchise? So, this was for Iron Man 2. Got different people in the Iron Man armor. You got uh, Catherine Bigelow, Guy Ritchie, uh, Neil Plomkamp, whoever that is, Michael Bay, Guillermo del Toro, and Ben Affleck. Uh, I guess po uh, people who were lined up to pl uh, direct Iron Man. 
Unmarvelous Migrations. Sam Raimi, Ang Lee, Ed Norton, and Brian Singer. Then you got different movie style posters. Got Nyx, Protector of the Night. Dark Guardian. And Pi, I guess it is. Uh, where there is life, there is hope. Okay. I've actually never heard of those movies, so uh, I do remember seeing something about Shia LaBeouf, though, in that outfit. So, I don't know. Hitman's Hitmaker. Kane and Lynch. Bat Signals. Uh, David Finch ranks the top 10 artists that shaped his Caped Crusader. You got number 10 being Dave McKean from Arkham Asylum. Number 9, Bill. Senkowitz, Batman Detective Comics, Batman Black and White, Batman GCPD, Dark Knight Dynasty, DC First, Batgirl Joke. Number eight is Neil Adams. Seven, Frank Miller. Six, Tim Sale. Number five is Kelly Jones. Four is Jim Lee. Jim Lee is probably one of my favorite comic book artists as well. Uh, number three is Kevin Nowlin. Two, Eduardo Rizzo. And number one, Simon Bisley. There's examples of their artwork side by side with their names. and Check that out. Nice little image of Batman and the Joker kind of going crazy. Very nice. Last Man Standing, Doctor Who meets classic Star Trek in a comic showdown we want to see. I wouldn't mind checking that out. Of course, this was the Matt Smith Doctor. Uh, this was the Doctor who introduced me to Doctor Who. Um, he was my favorite. But then I started really getting into Peter Capaldi's Doctor. And I really liked that. I never really cared for the original series Star Trek, though. Uh, I'm more of a Next Generation Voyager DS9 uh, Trekkie. The pull list. You've got Hawkeye Blind Spot, number one of four. Batwoman number one. You have Witchfinder, Lost and Gone Forever number one. Walking Dead number 82. Batman and Robin number 20. Amazing Spider Man 655. Superboy number four. Sweet Tooth number 18. Hulk number 30. Alright, so now you've got a little spotlight. Hawkeye and Mockingbird. Recommended Super Romances. Green Arrow Black Canary Wedding Album. Astonishing X Men Omnibus. Buffy Season 8, Volume 7, Twilight, Spider-Man Blue, you got the secret stash, Jeffrey Brown shares a deleted scene from the upcoming ChangeBots 2. That was written by Andy Serwin. 
because it said the secret stash, I almost, uh, I almost imagined Kevin Smith writing it. Because as most of us know, Kevin Smith owns a comic book store called Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash. All right. 21st Century Fan Man. True Blue Geek or Poser Chick. Meet the new generation of comic fan. All right, so number one, he has an iPhone. Number two is an iPad. Number three, BPRD satchel, Star Trek shoes, Red Lantern T, Xbox 360, PS3, Hellboy and Iron Man movie props. 10 inch action figures, absolute editions, superhero bookends, and con sketch art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Art attack, Marco Jurjevic. We examine the tools of the trade used by the top Marvel cover artist. Some examples of his artwork. NOH comment, superstar David Mack on the past and future of Kabuki. Nobel Prize, Fringe Star Shows, an Added Dimension. An All-Star is Born, this is of course the movie adaptation of All-Star Superman, which I may review sometime in the future, I'm not quite sure. I didn't really care for it, but a lot of people did, so I may give it a shot. Bruce Tim provides a first look at DC's latest straight to DVD masterpiece. Tune teasers you got Batman Year One, Green Lantern Emerald Knights, Green Lantern the Animated Series. Very nice. Agents of Atlas. For those of you who think he looks familiar but can't quite place him, he was actually the uh, Danny Glover's partner in Saw, the original Saw movie, as well as, and I believe he was also the blue galaxy ranger on power rangers lost galaxy i think that's him pretty sure it is if i'm wrong leave a comment down below he also kind of reminds me of pedro from uh, napoleon dynamite <laughs> you got bruce campbell here as well hail to the king Camelot's Monarch on Swords, Sex, and Vampire Babies. Toy Fair Magazine. Also owned by Wizard World. Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. The Oral History. Did you guys ever watch that show as growing up? It was on uh, Fox Family for a while before it became ABC Family. Not bad show. Not that great, but not bad. Got an animated Stanley there behind J. Jonah Jameson, Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin, 
Iceman, Spider-Man. Um, I think that's Starfire. I could be wrong. And Swarm. Or is that Sandman? I'm not sure. Continuing with Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Digital Divas. You got Tomb Raider. You got Kitana. You got Princess Peach. Uh, Darkstalkers. Uh, Cammy. From Street Fighter. Storms of Bruin. I just wanted to let myself cut loose and write as much crazy shit as I could. I found metal to be the appropriate soundtrack. Rick Reminder. Worlds Collide. House of Pain. Rules. Excuse me, my son is running around in the background. I do apologize if you hear any stomping. Rules every fan man and woman should know about dating. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> Don't be a scruffy looking nerf herder. Look your best. That doesn't mean wear an authentic Stormtrooper outfit or t-shirt that says Cheech and Bong. Dress nice, tuck in your shirt, and put the best you forward. Feel confidence, or feel confident. Confidence is the key to success. Full dating. Or anything for that matter. It's okay to be a geek, but always go geek chick. <laughs> Don't go Tony Stark. No fanboy chatter. Take it slow. That's always something I was uh, not very good at when I was dating. I uh, kind of took it pretty fast and almost always kissed on the first date. <laughs> Say what you feel. Make sure you agree on the big stuff. Dinner is romance. It's all in the kiss. You're not getting laid the first time out. Sometimes that's not true. <laughs> It's all geek to him. Hollywood treasure host Jonathan Mancuta may be the biggest fanboy on earth. You got some toys here. You got Modoc, you got the Punisher, you got Captain America. Actually, that's Bucky Barnes as Captain America got Gambit, you got Batman black and white. It's a Modoc statue from Bowen Designs. Punisher statue from Bowen Designs. Captain America premium format figure. You got Gambit action figure from Marvel Select and Cliff Chiang Batman statue. Real life bat grappling gun. Yeah, I have done research on some of the stuff on what it would take to be a a Batman type in real life uh, just for fun you know 
I don't think he'd be Batman would be able to put that on his utility belt. <laughs> it's a grappling gun, uh, gadget holster. What do we call this? Uterus belly phones. <laughs> Killer earphones. <laughs> Not bad. Come to the dark side. We have cookies. <laughs> Let's see, what is this? Answer the call of duty at your local Jeep dealer. Okay. Soaps for comic dopes. <laughs> you got Boba Fett. You got Fight Club. You got Transformers. Uh, the Decepticons. Nintendo controllers. Doctor Who. <laughs> ah. Market Watch. Graphic Holy Grails. I do apologize for that, guys. My neighbor does drive a motorcycle. It happens. So, Graphic Holy Grails. You've got Action Comics number one from 1938. As of two, March of 2011, the current guide price $750,000. Detective Comics number 27 from 1939. As of March 2011, the guide price was $900,000. Showcase number four, The Birth of the Silver Age. First appearance of the Barry Allen Flash. Valued at $55,000 as of March 2011. Fantastic Four number one from 1961, valued at $100,000 as of March 2011. I actually used to own that issue. Amazing Fantasy number 15, the first appearance of Spider Man from 1962. Valued at $150,000. Fantastic Four, number 48 through 50 from 1966. The first Silver Surfer and Galactus. Valued at $2,450. Uncanny X-Men, number 129 through number 143, 1980 to 1981. The new X-Men debut. This was when Wolverine, Colossus, and Storm, as well as Nightcrawler and a few others, joined the X-Men. Price guide value $566. Batman The Dark Knight Returns, numbers 1 through 4, 1986. Price guide value $51. And of course, this was back in 2011, so those prices may have gone up, or they may have dropped. You never know. The Man of Steel, numbers 1 through number 6 from 1986. I had that exact issue at one time. Price guide value, $18. Watchmen. Numbers 1 through 12, 1986 to 1987, $103. Shop Talk, the Bat franchise, running behind. Glory Days, Greener Pastures. Here's a little mini price guide. 
Um, nowhere near what it used to be, though. Back in uh, Wizards' heyday, um, they used to have price guides that were about that thick that m made up the majority of uh, the magazine. Um, but the magazines themselves were like that thick, whereas the price guides were about the size of this magazine here, you know, um, but comics would, uh, oh, I guess this wasn't the last issue. I thought it was 235. Number 236. Actually, maybe it was the last issue, because I remember reading that um, they had planned for another issue, but the artists and writers and everyone showed up one day and the doors were locked, and uh, they just stopped publishing. They switched everything over to online. Um... So I, I think maybe this was the last issue. Um, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Captain America's trademark prop is ready for its close-up. So. Very nice. I really miss my Wizard magazines. I wish I would have kept them. Um, I am going to go back through and try and find them all and, uh, recollect them, uh, just because I always liked reading through them. I would read through them multiple times, um, and I just really liked them. I want to go back and re-read them to get inspired for Comic Getting for future episodes, kind of get inspired, um... And get more of a uh, audience for our show. So, there you have it, guys. This was the ASMR, my first ASMR video, right here on Comic Eden TV. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a comment below, and uh, if you like this video, Give it a thumbs up and uh, let us know that you want to see more ASMR geek culture videos right here on Comic Ed TV. Take care, everyone.